Take a look at this guy. I got a pretty sharp image of him, but the background is a little bit too hectic for my taste with way too much stuff going on. But we can change that in Lightroom, making the whole background look a bit softer and thus make our subject pop. So let me show you how it's done. You can follow along by downloading the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. There are a few things we have to get out of the way first before we can start with the cool stuff. So first off, this was shot at a rather high ISO. You can already spot a little bit of noise. So to get rid of that, go ahead, open up the details panel. And here we want to click on denoise. Lightroom will do all the work for us applying the AI denoise and nicely reducing the overall noise levels. Perfect. Then you can also spot a few tweaks in the background. Those will become a problem if we leave them in when we blur the background these will just stay as distracting as they are right now. So we need to remove them. Go ahead, open up the remove tool right here. Then we want to choose the remove mode and we want to use generative AI. So make sure to check the checkbox. Then what I'm going to do is to just brush over all these very visible tricks in the background. Make sure to cover every area of these tree branches. Otherwise, we, we might not remove them properly. Now with the tree branches selected, what I'm going to do is to click on remove and hopefully Lightroom will clean up the image for us. So that's looking a whole lot better and we can start working on the background. So let's head out of the remove tool. By the way, I forgot to mention, I already have cropped the image quite heavily to frame the bird in a more pleasing way. So just keep that in mind. Now for the background, there is a very specialized tool to achieve exactly what we want. And that's called Lens Blur. With the Lens Blur, we can set up a focus range and blur the rest of the image. So what you want to do first is to click on apply right here. Analyzing this scene will take a while. So be a little patient here. Once this is done, you instantly can see the results. So let me turn off the Lens Blur feature and looking at the background, you can see how we are reducing the chaos that is going on with all those leaves in the background, which would just help making the subject pop. One thing to keep in mind, of course, the lens blur feature isn't perfect. That means if we zoom into this image, finer details might get lost. That is something you need to keep in mind. Of course, we can use the brush refinements down below. We can expand that and try to manually bring back in focus with the focus brush, brushing along the feathers of the bird. But in my experience, this isn't that precise either. So I'm fine with losing a little bit of detail right here for a better background. But there's one thing we can do as well, and that's to work on the focus range. For that, we want to click on visualize depth. And here we can exactly see what areas of the image are in focus and which aren't. One thing I want to change, I want to bring back the details in the water in the foreground. Because right now, only our subject is in focus. Let's go back on visualize depth. You can see right here in the bottom right corner, this area isn't in focus. So I'm going to grab the focus brush and I'm going to just brush in the focus right here in the foreground for the water. Just like that. I want to have these visible details on the water surface like this. But other than that, looking at the focus range, this is looking pretty good and it's exactly what we want. We can still improve it by bringing up the blur amount. Again, keep in mind, we kind of lose a little bit of details around the bird. But if you're not pixel peeping, you will not notice this. So for me, that's totally fine. Also, we can choose between different kinds of bouquet. This might help improve the background further. So it's always worth to just click through those types real quick. I think I'm going with the second bouquet right here. And that's about it for the lens blur feature. So let's take a look at before real quick. You can see it's a huge, huge improvement to before. But there are still a few things we can do. At this point, we can start working on the basic tonal adjustment. So let's open up the basic panel. First off, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape just because I like how this is looking on this image. Then the whole shot is a little bit too bright. I want to change that. I'm going to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to increase the contrast a little bit. And I think we can bring up the white somewhat to just push the brightness of the image. 
Okay, now the white balance also seems to be a bit off with some very subtle blue color cast. So let's change that. I'm going to very slightly bring up the temperature. And I also want to bring down the tint, making the green tones of the image more intense this way. But that's looking good. Then let's bring up the vibrance for stronger colors. And that's it for the basic adjustments. Again, let's compare to before and again looking much better with the adjusted brightness. Now we can use masking to further tweak the background. So let's open up the masking panel. I want to play around with the light of the scene, making the left side of the image a little bit darker and adding some kind of light effect coming in from the right side. Also, I want to work on the subject. So there are a few areas which we can work on. Let me start on the left side. I'm going to use a linear gradient covering pretty much the left side like this. I want to make it darker, but of course I don't want to change the subject. So we need to modify this mask by subtracting a subject mask. That's looking pretty good so far, but the foreground is also selected, which I don't want. So I'm going to subtract another mask. This time I'm using a linear gradient, just taking out the foreground like this. And with the mask setup, how can we make this side of the image darker? Simply by pulling down the exposure. Making the background darker like this will not only help to make the subject stand out more from the background, but it again will help reduce the chaos a bit in the background. I'm also going to reduce the contrast and I want to bring down the whites as well. Again, further making the background darker. I do think I want to adjust the linear gradient a little so we are affecting a bit less of the right side. So I'm just shifting it further to the left. There's one more thing we can do to make the background look blurrier. So with this background mask, I'm going to go down into the effects panel right here and we are going to use negative texture. Let's bring it all the way down and let's use negative clarity just to blur the background slightly more. We could also bring down the sharpening if you want and maybe increase the noise reduction to really go crazy here. So let me turn off this mask to see the difference from before to after. All in all looking much, much better. And those are basically the tricks we can use to work on the background of an image like this. Of course, there are more things we can do on this shot. So let's continue. I'm using a new linear gradient, which I'm going to place over the foreground because I want to have some more structure in the foreground. And I'm going to start by increasing the exposure very, very gently like that just making it a bit brighter. Then I'm going to add texture, which will help boost the details. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity. All right, that's looking great. Then for that light effect coming in from the right side, I'm going to use a radial gradient. Let's make it very wide and very thin like that. I'm going to rotate it a bit just to make it look more interesting, I'm going to place the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to have a more natural effect. And again, we don't want to change the brightness of the subject, so we want to subtract another subject mask. For the light effect itself, all we need to do is to bring up the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the whites to make the light more intense. And I think I'm even going to very gently bring up the blacks which will give this light some kind of soft glow effect. Okay, that's looking good so far. Next up, I wanna work on the subject itself. Let's create a new mask and choose Select Subject. I think that's looking pretty good. There's a bit of that tree log selected at the bottom, but I don't think that's a big deal. What I want to do for the subject is to add a bit more contrast. So I'm going to start by bringing down the blacks. I'm also going to bring up the clarity just to boost midtones contrast. And I want to bring up the texture, adding more sharpness to the subject. And we could even bring up the saturation just a little bit. So right around here looks pretty good to me. One more important thing for the subject is its eye. We can improve that quite nicely. For that, we want to zoom in. So let's click right in here, go back into the masking panel. And to target the eye, I'm going to use a new mask and I'm choosing the brush. 
Make sure the brush feather is set to zero to get a nice hard brush. And then just brush along the eye like this. That's looking pretty good. To make the eye pop, I'm going to bring up the contrast first. This kind of makes the whole thing a bit too dark, so I'm going to also bring up the whites. And for some more punch, we could bring up the clarity. That works really, really well on eyes like these. And we can play around with the colors, bringing up the temperature, giving the eye more of a yellow color tone this way. And we can bring up the saturation as well. Okay, that's looking good. At this point, we can zoom back out. And finally, one more thing I want to do. Let's create another subject mask. This time, I want to target the bird's head. So let's click on those three dots right here. Go to Intersect Mask With and choose Radial Gradient. Now I'm creating a radial gradient around its head. That's looking pretty good. I want to further push the contrast of this area because I think it's kind of lacking contrast. So let's bring up the contrast slider. Let's bring down the blacks. And let's increase the whites. Beautiful. So I think that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks so we can see the difference from before. To after. You can see we have created some really nice light effect, making the subject stand out. Now we can focus a bit on the colors, so let's head out of the masking menu and go into the color mixer panel. Want to work on the hue first. I want to bring down the orange hue very slightly, which will affect the bird's eye, the beak, and the legs. Like that. I'm also going to bring down the yellow hue for the same effect just shifting the colors a bit because I like it more this way. Then let's head into the saturation tab. I want to bring up the saturation of the main colors of the image, so mainly orange. I'm going to raise the orange tones quite a lot. I'm also going to raise the yellow tones a lot. And let's bring up the green tones, of course, for the background. I'm going to make this a really, really vibrant image just because I like this. Now looking at the subject, you can see a very heavy blue tone. I wanna get rid of that, and therefore I'm going to bring down the aqua saturation, and I'm going to bring down the blue saturation as well, neutralizing any blue color cast like that. Wonderful. Then let's go down into the calibration tab, and here, just what I do for all my images, bring down the blue primary hue, and bring up the saturation some more. And that's basically it for the color grading. Now the only thing left to do, of course, the sharpening, and again, therefore, we want to head into the details panel one more time, then drop the radius all the way down, increase the details all the way up. Of course, we want to apply some masking. Make sure to hold down the Alt key so we can nicely target the subject like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening, and we are done editing this image. So I hope you can make use of this technique, making the background of your wildlife shots a little bit blurrier and more cleaned up this way. Let me know what you think of this technique. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.